Mark Coleman. Oh, guys, I tried to bring you this story yesterday. It came out yesterday. And I called Wes Sims. I got Wes's voicemail. I had a hard time talking about this yesterday. This one was a really tough one for me. So, I'm trying to think of where I want to start this. I think I want to start you off on third base. Okay, here's third base. The headline that I read does not look good for Mark Coleman. Now, he is in the ICU, intensive care unit. He's in a coma. So I believe that that was induced by the hospital either way. And they say it doesn't look good. They're saying is that Col Coleman is going to lose this battle, which means he's going to lose his life. Now, I want to start you there on third base, okay? All right, time out. Let's back up. Let me get you to first. Mark Coleman's asleep. His dog, named Hammer, comes and wakes him up. Now, Mark is just in the sweet spot of a process of rebirth and a reintroduction to health. You heard Brian Ortega talking about it and used the example of the eagle. Well, Mark Coleman's doing the same thing. He's sober. He's exercising. He's back on social media. He's coming to you guys. He's coming to you guys so that you keep him accountable. He's showing you himself each day and his progress. You probably don't even know how helpful and important you are to Mark Coleman's journey back. At any rate, Hammer wakes him up and woke him up because the house was on fire. So Mark Coleman goes right at burning house and his and the whole family sleeping. So the dog woke Mark up. Mark's got to go and get dad, get him outside and go back in for mom. Now, when Mark is going back in for mom, the hair is already burnt off of his body. The house is so hot and so fire. It, it's already burned. It's more so now and he's headed back in. He saves mom. He gets her. He gets her to the yard. He goes back in for the dog. And that's where they found him. They found him inside. When hospitals got there and they, I apologize, you know, when emergency crews got there and they got the fire contained a little bit and somebody got inside, there was Mark unconscious on the floor from smoke ventilation. And that's a hard one. That'll kill you. And one of the reasons that'll kill you is because then you can't get out. So then you keep bringing in, uh, breathing in that smoke, which means you're, you're not breathing in anything, right? Fire kills oxygen. Fire must have oxygen in case you ever went. That's why you can put a blanket over a fire if you put it completely with the fire. Okay, great. So he's unconscious when they get him. He's unconscious now. The difference is he's in care. He saved his parents. God, I hope he saved that dog. You know, they didn't put that in the story. I know Mark didn't care the dog, but I'm, I'm hoping, man, that dog found his way out. And you're just in a really tough spot. Like any parent would die to save their kid. Not even a, that's, it's not even a close call. They would want it. If it didn't happen that way and they had to go on living, knowing their child died, say they wouldn't even want it. It would be, it's not what they would want, but this child is different. This child is special. And this child saved the parents instead of the other way around. And so, okay, so now I got you to third base. Got you back where we started. And I take, I take extreme umbrage with this. Headline says it's not looking good for Mark Coleman. And I must tell you, I don't have stats and I don't have data. I don't have a friend that I can tell you about that's been in this position where I got a little bit of insight on it. But if anybody has ever come through this and they still believe it doesn't look good for Mark Coleman, if anybody has ever been in this spot and or worse and come back and you think that person was tougher than the guy that had all the hair burned off his body but went through the house saving lives anyway. That's before we get into, that's before we get into the NCAA champion. It's before we get into the 1992 Olympia. That's before I tell you that in 1991, he was a world finalist. Something he never talks about. It's a silver medal. He was the second on earth, but that was a disappointment to him, so he never talked about it. Before we get into the UFC champion, before I, I get into the Pride Grand Prix winner, before I get into any of this tough guy stuff, 
Because that's nothing. That's not the NCAA. That is nothing compared to the guy that ran through fire and went back into it willingly for a non human's life. And somebody that wrote the article isn't sure he's going to come through this. I just want to remind you who you're dealing with. We knew he was one of the baddest men on earth. Being the baddest man on earth, being the toughest are very different. They're, it's a very different conversation. One knows aggression. Take a guy down and headbutt him, pound him until the referee says stop. That's aggression. Fighter is something different. A fighter is the one that has to deal with the aggression. Mark Coleman is one tough son of a bitch. And if anybody has ever come back from this, you would be very, very naive to believe that this is going to hold down the hammer.